Good afternoon guys, it's Jager262 and welcome back to the channel. I'm taking a break from my Lord of Plagues, although I will be painting him shortly here after and I'll probably put up a video later tonight. Uh, to airbrush some Death of Guardsmen that you see before you and before I get started I just wanted to do like a quick intro to airbrush. I know I've used the airbrush a couple of times on the channel, uh, but for anybody who doesn't know what it is, you know, just go over some basics. This is by no means a tutorial. I'm not good enough for that, but just covering a little bit about the airbrush. This is the one I'm using. It's an Abest dual action. And first things first, dual action simply means that the way an airbrush works is air flows through this chamber here from a compressor, which I'll show you in a minute, and flows through the brush and sprays paint, which you'll find here in this pot. And the really cool thing about the Abest and the really bad thing about it at the same time is that this the pot comes off for easier cleaning, but it means that paint gets trapped in that reservoir right here. Uh, but other than that, the essentials of an airbrush is just that, you're just painting with air. So air flows through here, passes through the paint, and the paint sprays out here. And now, how much paint uh, how fast and how hard are all things that determine what it's going to look like and how hard is basically just PSI how much pressure you're applying and it's all contingent on the needle which I don't know if I can get it to focus there it is the needle and so dual action means that you have to push down to activate airflow and then you pull it back to increase the spread now obviously right now when the needle is completely filling the hole there we go no paint goes through and then when you pull back that is maximum flow for this needle and you can change these pieces in or in and out i think i'm using a 0.3 millimeter right now just to do because i'm painting with lacquers most of the time although today i'll be doing both lacquers and acrylics but lacquers are really thin paint so i try to keep it really tight so that we can get nice lines and so that's pretty much the basics of the airbrush like a really quick rundown again not really a tutorial but paint goes in the pot, reservoir on top, hook it up to a compressor via a hose. And right here is a moisture trap. Any type of compressed air will build up moisture over time. So this basically just acts as a trap to capture the moisture before it gets into the airbrush because it will disturb airflow. And for acrylics, it really damages the final finish because they're water-based. And so that noise is the compressor. Once that's on, you can just you can kind of hear the airbrush. That's pretty much it. There's the basics. So for today's video, I'll be using Vallejo Surface Primer, uh, German Panzer Gray for the dark areas, and white. There it is, white for the highlights and the reason I'm doing that is because again lacquers are very thin so hold on let me turn this off lacquers are very thin and so you can actually do a really really great detailed uh, pre-shading with them and for the lacquer part which I don't have here right now but I'll show you before I paint it it's going to be a Mr. Color or Mr. Paint I don't remember which one it is uh, Russian Green just because I think it emulates the Death Guard look a little bit better so let's get painting. Yeah, he's completely covered. I switched to my Iwata because for some reason the Abbest just completely stopped working. Zero airflow at all through the whole airbrush. Uh, it's not a company I've ever really used before. It was actually doing quite well up until literally today. Uh, but the Iwata is a great airbrush and they're a great company. So. The way I'm painting this is just really quick passes. 
holding the airbrush about two or three inches from the actual miniature. You can go closer, but with paint this thin and with a spray this wide, I wouldn't recommend it. This is an easy way to lose detail. But if you're trying to do really tight stripes at a really low PSI, you could definitely pull that off and get way closer than this. Yeah, just like a primer with a rattle can or a spray can, only you have more control over where the paint goes and how much of it goes there. Like, for example, on that handle, or that knee pad just under there. These little places you might not always be able to hit with a rattle can. That's pretty much it. They are both primed and ready to go. Well, they're not ready to go yet. Because I will be doing the highlights soon. But for now, that's basically it. That's Airbrushing 101. All right, and so the reason for the heavy angling on some of that is just to make, let's see if I can get them into focus. Sort of in focus, there we go. Is just to make the highlights a little bit more extreme. So that way when we paint the green on him, you'll see that everything upwards or at the top where light is going to be shining down upon him artificially. And what that means is, is when you look at something, obviously the things closest to you are the brightest depending on where your light source is and the light source in this case is directly above him and so that's why everything under here remains the black primer same thing there and then everything on the top is white so that when we spray the green over it the green at the top will be brighter than the green at the bottom simulating a harsher color modulation for better lighting effect and that's pretty much it airbrush basics 102 <laughs> Uh, pre-shading and highlighting. This is a really quick job though. Most times it won't look like this. It'll be a little bit more precise, but these miniatures are very small and my airbrushes are kind of freaking out right now. So let's get to the green. Okay, so we are using Mr. Paint's acrylic lacquer for b zero, which is Soviet green. The reason my voice is hard to hear is because at lacquer, you need to wear a mask. You need to wear breathing protection. It's it's a, it's a strong paint. It's bad, but I don't really need to talk for this. Let's get started.
Sorry I'm doing so much of that off camera. Lacquer is just very hard to use and very hard to see because it's so thin. But as you can see, all that highlighting right there is showing through very nicely. Giving us a very nice modulated contrast between dark, between shadows and colors. So there you go. And that'll be it for this video. Just an easy way to do some quick airbrushing and color modulation for Warhammer miniatures. And then I'll do a full paint video of this, just like with the Lord of Plagues, in the coming week. So thank you so much for watching, as always. Subscribe to this channel if you want to see the... Sorry, let me take this off. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see the Lord of Plague video updates that I'll be doing later this afternoon. Throw up a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.